So the first thing you need to do is navigate to the studio where we have the elementary education scratch packs. Um, so if you look at um, what we had before, that is this URL right here, scratch.mit.edu slash studios, and then this number 2070235 slash projects. Once you navigate there, you'll notice we have several projects in here. Now, you asked a question about phases of the moon. So I'm going to go ahead and click on phases of the moon. I think the question you're asking actually applies to all of these, though. So let me go ahead and use this as an example. And then you can apply this to the others as you explore these different scratch packs that we've put together. I'm going to go ahead and click on phases of the moon. Now, this brings up an app that was created in Scratch. If I go ahead and click the, um, the green flag, which might play it, you'll notice nothing happens. And that's by design, because the purpose of these Scratch Packs is to provide resources that you can start with that kids can then program. So in this case, what we're trying to do is save the time of going out and finding the different graphics that people might need in order to program these, um, these different applications that you might apply in different subjects or topics. So what you're going to do, first of all, is you're going to go ahead and click on See Inside. The nice thing about every Scratch application that is created is everything is shared. Uh, nothing is hidden. So if you go out and find the most complicated um, or even the most simple um, Scratch apps that are out there, you can See Inside and remix every single one of them. So if I click on See Inside, now you'll notice here I'm given um, all of the resources and all of the coding. And as I mentioned, there is no coding associated with any of these files because what we wanted to do was provide the starters uh, resources so that kids could then go ahead and code them. So you notice in this case I have over here four different sprites in um, Scratch. So I've got all moon right here. I've got moon um, po, I can't even see what that positions I think. Moon phases and earth. You'll notice right now they're all kind of hidden. The way that if you wanted to unhide those, I could well, with the um, with the sprite that I want selected in the upper left hand corner of the sprite there's an I for information and you'll notice once that information shows up I've got the name of it if I wanted to rename it I could name it something instead of Earth I could call it Mars that's probably not a good idea in this case um, I could also go ahead and change the direction of it it's starting off direction facing 90 degrees zero degrees would be facing straight up that's a scratch thing uh, it talks about the rotation style, so um, <clears throat> is this going to rotate fully around as it does it, or is it only going to flip left or right, or is it not rotatable at all? Uh, can it be draggable is a question, and um, can it be shown, or is it going to be showing? So right now, you'll notice none of these um, sprites are actually showing. We imported them and put them in here and then hid them. Uh, so that you had them, but uh, we had to put them on the stage in order for us to be able to use them. So this is there. It's not showing. If you want to show it, you go ahead and click on the I for the information or click on the Show button. I'll go ahead and leave this one showing. With this showing, I want to show you probably uh, one of the most useful things here. We don't have any coding associated with this sprite, but if you go to Costumes, um, you'll be able to see the different costumes associated with each of these sprites. Now in this case, this is a phases of the moon thing, so we have the Earth, but we only have one picture of the Earth. However, the moon phases sprite, if you'll click on it, you'll notice it has all of the phases in here. Um, an interesting thing as well, uh, when we first put this together, we actually went ahead and named all of these with the appropriate phases. We realized as we did so, we were taking away an opportunity for the kids to be able to, your students to be able to name these faces themselves. And so um, instead right now what we have is one sprite with multiple costumes. Now, just like an actor on a stage can change costumes, a sprite on its stage, which is this main area that we see, can also change its costume. And so we have all these different phases of the moon. We went ahead and just named them uh, moon phases 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on, so that the kids themselves, if they wanted to, could go ahead and rename these. So right here we see we've got a new moon, right? So they might say new moon. Um, and then they can go ahead and uh, likewise name each of these by clicking on the costume. This is costume number two now, which I can tell by looking in the upper left hand corner. And it's called Moon Phases 2. So if I wanted to, I could go ahead and name these things. In this case, I think this is Crescent. Um, and we can see with these different phases as they go through. So that's um, the use of these different things. If you click on each of these 
um, sprites, you'll notice that we've got several different uh, costumes on a lot of these. So in this case, we've got the Earth itself just has its one costume. But Moon Phases uh, sprite has a whole bunch of, it should have all of the Moon Phases, uh, more or less. And then um, you'll notice as well, we've got the Moon Positioning, which is the Moon as it goes around the Earth. Now, all of these are images that we've taken from um, openly licensed uh, sources. Uh, many of them come from Wikimedia Commons, um, but we wanted to make sure that we were using images that were legally allowed to use, and so you, you ought to be able to use them and remix them and have the kids have a lot of fun with them. Uh, one other thing I wanted to point out is the stage itself can also have several backdrops. So in this case, we see the sun here on the right-hand side of the stage, but uh, you'll notice we have a stage that is without, with a sun and one that is without a sun. And those are named appropriately as well. So if you were to uh, go ahead and you wanted to have kids use this themselves, they can go ahead and click on the Remix button up here in the right-hand corner. And then uh, it, this would show up in their Scratch projects that they're working on, and they would be able to code their own Scratch project using all of the resources that are in this one as the starter pack. So hopefully that answers your questions about how to um, go ahead and use these starter packs, and um, hopefully you're able to play around with them and have some fun yourself, and we are here to answer questions for you. So if you have any questions, um, you can email me at peter underscore rich at byu.edu. Thanks.